Bader Ginsburg is no stranger to the limelight. She certainly earned her spot on the list of most recognized Americans. And while opera diva is what she dreamed of being as a teenager, there's another Monica, a nom de guerre, or warrior's name, her young fans have given her. I have to ask you, do you know that they call you the notorious? The notorious RBG, when, when that started a few years ago, and people said, well, what do you think about it? And I said, well, the notorious B.I.G., the rapper, and I have something in common. We were both born and bred in Brooklyn, New York. She says it all started in 2013, when a student at NYU Law School was angry over what she saw was the Supreme Court's weakening of the 1965 Voting Rights Act. I had written a strong dissent. She took my bench announcement of my dissent and put it up. And that's how it started. That law student, Shana Konishnik, put it up on her Tumblr blog and has kept it alive with thousands of fans checking in. Oh my goodness, you look a little different. <laughs> Denise Graves joined us here in the Russian lounge of the Kennedy Center after her performance in the opera Champion. Champion is one of two contemporary operas appearing at the Kennedy Center now. They both deal with current issues. Champion with homophobia, dead men walking with the death penalty. In an upcoming night at the Kennedy Center called Justice at the Opera, Justice Ginsburg will talk about the current legal issues that were in some of the oldest operas ever performed, like the classic Carmen. Her iconic role. Uh, I describe that as the ultimate plea bargain <laughs> <laughs> because here's Carmen and she is being carted off to jail and she negotiates a deal with, with Don Jose. Had you thought of that? Hadn't thought of it in those terms, but that, that's, that's exactly what happens. Do you know that there is an opera, a one-hour opera, called Scalia Ginsburg, and it will be produced this summer in, at the Glimmerglass Festival? She says the composer, Derek Wang, now a lawyer, was in law school when he came up with the idea. And he's reading cases in constitutional law with Ginsburg on one side, Scalia on the other. He decides this could make a very funny opera. In, in, the, in the libretto, there are words that are straight out of our opinions or our speeches, and the composer is also the librettist, is trying to portray two people who have very different views on some very important things, and yet genuinely like each other. Justice Antonin Scalia, who died suddenly last year, was her friend with whom she shared her love of opera. And opera always makes for lively conversation with her friend Denise, who is now, as the justice was once, a working mother. I have seen Ella recently. I saw her when she was about, what, eight or nine? And now, how old is she? She's 12, but she looks a bit older yeah. than that. Yeah, because she's very tall. She's very tall. Very thin, but very tall. Ruth and Martin Ginsburg raised two children, had grandchildren, and before his death, they had lived a 56-year-long love affair. She says her daughter, a lawyer now, is also a good cook like her father was. She wants to make sure that I'm properly nourished. So she comes once a month, fills my freezer with individual dinners. Family, friends, and her many, many fans want Ruth Bader Ginsburg to stay healthy and have a long, long life. Giving me good advice, like eat, eat kale. Ha, 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 ha.